Please adhere to YouTube's selected guidelines before viewing content of this video. I do not encourage or condone any products, actions, or behaviors shown in this video. All videos are produced in a safe, professional, and controlled environment. Please do not attempt to replicate any actions performed during the video. All actions are performed by professionals. Alrighty, so today I'm going to be smoking and reviewing the Fortuna Green Menthol Cigarettes, which are a more interesting cigarette than not. Although, I do suppose that's not really the right way of putting it. Fortuna as a brand is more interesting than not, but I do not expect these cigarettes themselves to be all that interesting. But what is Fortuna as a brand, and what is so interesting about Fortuna as a brand? Well, Fortuna, meaning fortune or luck in Spanish, is a, well, Spanish brand of cigarettes that was first introduced onto the market in Spain in 1974. They were first introduced by Tabacalera, which was the government-run tobacco monopoly within Spain at the time, from what I can tell, at least. And Fortuna was initially introduced to compete with foreign brands that were taking market share away from older Spanish brands. And Tabacalera had a great idea on how to make Fortuna a really successful brand when compared to all of those other foreign brands that were taking market shares away from them. What they did was make Fortuna a cheaper brand than not and undercut all of those foreign brands in price. And so as such, Fortuna as a brand quickly grew to be more popular than not within Spain. However, Fortuna as a brand today is no longer produced by Tabacalera and it's no longer as popular as it once was. From what I can tell at least from an outsider's perspective, I've never visited Spain. But from what I can tell, based off of some quick research, the main cigarettes that are sold in Spain today are from foreign brands. Marlboro, Camel, stuff like that kind of thing. And so as such, while Fortuna may have gotten quite popular quite quickly in the short run, Tabacalera's plan did not play out in the long run. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Today, as said, Fortuna is not even produced by Tabacalera. Tabacalera was, as said, the old government-run tobacco monopoly within Spain. At some point in time, I figure it probably privatized, and then in the 1990s, specifically in 1999, it combined with what was, at one point in time, the French tobacco monopoly. That company was called CETA. CETA also privatized in the 1980s, I want to say. And they combined together to create a new company called Altatis. And then in 2008, Altatis was purchased by Imperial Brands, then known as Imperial Tobacco. And so now Fortuna, which was originally introduced to compete directly with foreign brands of cigarettes, is now owned by a foreign tobacco company, which is pretty ironic if I do say so myself. Today, both within Spain and outside, Fortuna is a imperial brand, brand of cigarettes. However, what I have with me today is not the Spanish variety of Fortunas. In fact, Fortuna menthols are not even sold anymore within Spain, from what I know at least, as they comply with the EU's menthol ban. And so as such, the only place where you can still buy Fortuna menthols, from my knowledge at least, isn't Spain, it's actually the United States. And this certainly is, well, it literally is, a United States variety of Fortunas. And these were not made in Spain, from what I can tell at least, instead being made in Greensboro, North Carolina, in the United States by ITG Brands, which is the United States subsidiary of Imperial Brands. And the reason, I do suppose, to summarize, the reason why Fortuna is a much more interesting cigarette brand than not to me is because it was initially introduced to compete with foreign cigarette brands. But then, just about 30 years after its initial introduction, well, maybe not 30 years, about 40 years after its initial introduction, Fortuna became owned by a foreign cigarette brand. Which is pretty amusing if I do say so myself. Quite ironic, and that is why I think Fortuna is a more interesting cigarette brand than not. Now, from what I've heard within Spain, Fortunas are not the most highly regarded these days. And the same can be said about the United States as well. Fortuna is marketed as a budget brand of cigarettes within the United States, and I have indeed tried the red full-flavored variety of these cigarettes previously. And I found them to be 
surprisingly okay. Not really good per se, but they weren't like bad by any means kind of thing. They weren't terrible, especially by budget cigarette standards. And so as such, I am expecting these to be not bad either. I'm not expecting them to be really good by any means kind of thing. I'm not expecting them to be excellent or amazing, but I'm not expecting them to be genuinely bad. I'm not expecting to want to throw up the moment I take a hit of them. Let me just put it that way kind of thing. But first off, before I go ahead and hop into my expectations and talk about what I'm expecting from these cigarettes in specific, I do first off want to give a big shout out to Fred Scott for having sent over this pack of cigarettes to my P.O. Box for me to make a review on. Thank you so much to Fred Scott for sending this pack, excuse me. Thank you so much to Fred Scott for sending this pack of cigarettes over to my P.O. Box for me to make a review on. I really, really, really do appreciate it. Fortunas are indeed sold in my area, but for some reason I've never seen Fortuna menthols before. And so as such, I certainly am very excited to have the opportunity to try these cigarettes right here, as I don't know how long it would be until I was able to find a pack of these in my local area. But, you know, thank you so much to once again to uh, Fred Scott for having sent over this pack right here to my P.O. Box for me to make a review on. Without further ado, let's go ahead and cover my expectations for the Fortuna Green Menthol Cigarettes. So, what are my expectations taste-wise for these cigarettes right here? Well, taste-wise, I am expecting a more sour than sweet menthol spearmint taste with maybe a hint of tobacco as an undertone, but honestly, I'm kind of doubting that. I'm also thinking there might be a little bit of a sort of chemical or additive taste in there as well, and that's very much overall what I'm expecting taste-wise from these cigarettes. A pretty basic, more cheap than not menthol taste, let me just put it that way. Body-wise, I am expecting the body from these cigarettes to not really be all that small by any means. I'm not expecting it to be super big by any means either, but I'm I'm not expecting it to be small by any means, but definitely, I'd have to say, above average, uh, just due to the more full-flavored than not nature of these cigarettes, along with the king size of these cigarettes as well. I'd have to say, airflow-wise, I'm expecting the airflow to be perfectly fine from these cigarettes. These cigarettes do not seem t super tightly packed to me by any means. If I had to guess draw-wise, the draw is probably going to be maybe a little bit more heavy and airy than not. If I had to guess, these cigarettes probably have a line of perforation on the filter, which is why I'm thinking the draw is going to be more heavy and airy than not, but not like super heavy by any means. Definitely not as heavy as something like, let's say, an American Spirit, that is for sure. And I'm thinking roughness and smoothness wise, these are probably going to be right around a 6 out of 10, with, the, uh, with 1 being the smoothest and 10 being the roughest, so 6 out of 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. And then I'm thinking strength-wise, these are probably going to be about a 6 out of 10 as well. Not the most strong by any means, but definitely stronger than your typical average light cigarette, that is for sure. More like a full-flavored, but not quite there. And the same can be said about the roughness and smoothness, in my personal opinion. And those are my expectations for, well, the Fortuna Green Menthol Cigarettes. And so now, without further ado, it is time for me to go ahead and hop into the packaging. After I go over the packaging, I'm going to go ahead and get the cellophane all off. I'm going to go ahead and get the pack of cigarettes all opened up. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know what the Fortuna Green Menthol Cigarettes look like, what they feel like, and what the quality of them is like. Then after that, I'm going to go ahead and get one of these cigarettes right here all lit up. And I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know how these cigarettes actually are. Then after that, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys my final thoughts on these cigarettes. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and give them a rating as well. But first off, as said, we got to start with the packaging, which I will admit I actually like more so than not, as I'm a big fan of the asymmetricalness. I'm a big fan of the combination of both modern and classic design traits. And in my personal opinion as well, even though Fortunas are priced at and are marketed as a budget cigarette inside the United States, this packaging does not come off as super budget. It comes off more like a mid-range cigarette in my personal opinion. And as a whole, I actually like this packaging a little bit more so than not, I will admit. It's quite distinct from a distance, in my personal opinion, just due to the asymmetricalness and the ribbon stretching all the way up with some of the color changes, darker towards the bottom, kind of light in the middle, and then darker towards the top and everything like that kind of thing. And all of the text on the bottom of the pack kind of just blends in kind of thing. It looks distinct as a whole from a distance, and it's definitely more eye-catching than not, in my personal opinion. And while it might not be the most unique-looking cigarette pack in the world by any means kind of thing, it's still much more interesting-looking than not, in my personal opinion. And as a whole, I am actually a bigger fan of this packaging than not, and I actually like it more so than not. Now, of course, this is not the original 
Fortuna packaging from 1974 by any means, but it is still inspired by the original Fortuna packaging from 1974. From what I know, at least, I did look at some old photos of Fortuna packaging, and they all had a sort of ribbon, just like this kind of thing, just going up the packaging, but it was kind of in the middle of the packaging, not really in the side of the packaging. It wasn't asymmetrical. It was much more symmetrical, if I am remembering correctly, although I very well could be wrong. But now that I've kind of covered, I'd have to say, what I like about the Fortuna packaging, I do suppose now I should probably cover the details of this packaging. And so as such, let's go ahead and get started with that. We can see the background going around the green ribbon right here is all just a very basic white, really not too much going on in all honesty. We can see there is a silver line right here interrupted by a coat of arms right there. And then that silver line continues all the way up. That silver line is more dark than not, I definitely have to say, and a little bit metallic as well. And we can see next to the silver lines, there is a little bit of a green ribbon stretching all the way up just like that. And then on the other side of the green ribbon, there is another metallic silver line right there, which is, I would have to say, maybe, I'd have to say it's about the same darkness as, yeah, I'd have to say it's about the same darkness as the other silver line, but it does look a little bit lighter. I don't know if it's just the lighting or something like that kind of thing, but it looks to be about the same darkness, I definitely have to say. The metallicness of it definitely does make it a little bit hard to tell whether it's actually the exact same sort of tone or not kind of thing, but if I had to guess, it probably is. This green sort of ribbon that stretches all the way up to the top right here, though, is a little bit more interesting than not. We can see it starts off as much more dark than not down here, a very, very, very dark, almost sort of black green, I definitely have to say, and then it gets to be like lighter right here and then it gets darker as it goes towards the top as well and this ribbon right here doesn't just stop at the top of the packaging actually it goes all the way around the packaging just like that which is actually one of my favorite things about this packaging and I am a huge fan of that to say the least the packaging goes all the way or sorry not the packaging the design goes all the way around the packaging and that is something that I am a huge fan of that is for sure on the green ribbon right here though we can just see it just says Fortuna vertically just like that just says fortuna but it's actually horizontally but it, it's it's positioned in a vertical fashion kind of thing a little bit odd that is for sure but still looks pretty good in my personal opinion just says fortuna right there all in white with a black drop shadow uh beneath all of the white text and the text that i have to say in is is in a sort of times new roman-esque font or something like that kind of thing not exactly sure what font it's in but it's definitely not like the most interesting looking logo in the world by any means but it's not a bad looking logo by any means either and we can see to the side of the fortuna logo itself we have the fortuna coat of arms right here we can see there are a, uh, there, there are, oh, I'm getting my words just a little bit jumbled up. There are two sort of like dragons or lizards or something like that kind of thing on either side in silver. I definitely have to say those dragons or lizards uh, both have crowns on. And then in the middle, there is a shield right there, which has blue on this side and red on this side. The blue has four silver stars um, on it. Uh, towards the center of the shield, which is quite interesting. And then above the shield, we could just see there's a little bit of like a silver sun right there kind of thing. And then below all of that, there's just a ribbon going all the way down in the cross. That looks like the uh, lizards are like uh, stepping on it and everything like that kind of thing, I definitely have to say. Definitely a uh, more interesting look for a coat of arms than not, but not like the most interesting look I've ever seen, but not a bad look by any means. And this coat of arms does indeed interrupt the Fortuna um, ribbon, the Fortuna green ribbon, just a little bit, I have to say, but it's not a big deal by any means. And as a whole, this packaging still looks very, very, very good, even with the interruption right here. And one might actually say it actually looks better because of the interruption, because that just makes the packaging just look a little bit more interesting than not. Moving on below all of this, though, we can see the last detail on the front of the packaging. And that last detail is all of the text right here. In silver, it just says 20 Class A filter cigarettes right there. And it just says 20 Class A filter cigarettes. And that's really the biggest indication that this is indeed a budget cigarette in the United States. They're really saying, they're really pushing the fact that this is a Class A filter cigarette. Um... All cigarettes in the United States are Class A. Class A does not mean higher quality. It just is a tax designation inside the United States. But 
nonetheless, they're, they're pushing that kind of thing, just trying to make it look like it's a quality thing. It's not a quality thing. It's a tax, tax designation. All cigarettes within the United States are class A. They, there's no more class B cigarettes sold inside the United States anymore, from what I know at least. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to the front of the packaging. And this really is the biggest indication right here. This, uh, the 20 class A filter cigarettes text really is the biggest indication um, that this is actually marketed as a, a budget cigarette within the United States, in my personal opinion, at least. But as a whole, I like this packaging more so than not. I definitely have to say it's got a nice asymmetrical look to it kind of thing. The ribbon right here has some different color schemes going on and everything like that kind of thing. And while the Fortuna logo itself might not be the most interesting, it looks good with the rest of the packaging. And while this is by no means, in my personal opinion, minimalistic packaging, it is still more simplistic than not. And I am a sucker for more simplistic than not packaging. And so as such, I, I do like this packaging more so than not, I will admit. I do like this package. It's by no means like my favorite packaging in the world, but... I do still like it more than not, let me just put it that way. I think functionality-wise, it's pretty good packaging kind of thing. And I think aesthetics-wise, it's pretty good as well. It's just not like as good as some of the ones I like more. But that's pretty much all there is to the front of the packaging. So without further ado, let's go ahead and move on to the back of the packaging. And we can see the back of the packaging is quite literally exactly the same as the front. Not quite. We can see on the front of the packaging, the ribbon is on this side, and then on the back of the packaging, the ribbon is on the opposite side. Same with the, excuse me, same with the coat of arms right here. The coat of arms is on this side, and now the coat of arms is on this side. Basically, it's just the front of the packaging, but reversed on just the other side. So it's just reversed on a uh, horizontal axis, I do suppose. Reversed on a horizontal axis, I do think is the right way of putting it. Still, just as good of a look as uh, the front of the packaging, although I will admit, having seen the front of the packaging, I do think that this looks better on this side than this side, but this is the back of the packaging, so it is what it is kind of thing, but there's no details that are on the back of the packaging that aren't on the front. It's pretty much the exact same besides the... Actually, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There is one thing that is really interesting. The Fortuna logo itself isn't reversed. It's still the exact... It's still positioned in the exact same way. Well, it's not positioned in the exact same spot. No, actually it is. I'm looking I'm looking at it like that and it's actually positioned in the No, it's not the exact same spot. It's close though. It's close. That's interesting. So on the back of the packaging, the Fortuna logo itself is a little bit farther away from the wall of the um ribbon right here. I definitely have to see it's a little bit farther away and it's also not reversed either vertically or horizontally kind of thing, which I do suppose makes sense because otherwise it would be less readable. But either way, yeah, I actually didn't notice that. Yeah, this is a little bit different. The logo itself is positioned a little bit differently than on the front of the packaging, but that's really not a big deal. And more so than not, the back of the packaging is pretty much the exact same as the front. And that's pretty much all there is to the back of the packaging and the front of the packaging. And so now, without further ado, let's go ahead and move on to the side of the packaging. And we can see the side of the packaging has a green ribbon once again, even though that green ribbon does not stretch around on the top of the packaging or anything like that as this stretches around, just like that kind of thing. So this, it doesn't stretch around as well kind of thing but it does stretch around a little bit to the bottom of the packaging so i can't complain too much kind of thing it doesn't line up precisely as this is a little bit bigger than what we can see on the bottom of the packaging it doesn't line up precisely but it still looks better than not it still looks like it wraps around better than not so i really cannot complain there is a little bit of a interesting sort of logo right there at the top on the green ribbon on this side, and just like on the front of the packaging or the back of the packaging, um, we can see that the green ribbon has a darker area down here, gets lighter, and then darker up here once again. And in the middle of that darker to, to, to light area, I definitely have to say, there's an interesting logo right there. There's blue up there, and then it's like yellow, and then red, and then silver, and then a black sort of like splotch right there, something like that kind of thing. I'm not sure what logo that's supposed to be. Is that supposed to be ITG Brands logo or Imperial Tobacco's logo? Or is that supposed to be like the Fortuna, a Fortuna logo or something like that kind of thing? Or is it supposed to be like a Tabacalera logo? I have no idea in all honesty. I don't know what that logo is. If any of y'all know, let me know in the comments down below. But it is still a pretty good looking logo in my personal opinion. I like it. I like how that logo looks. It's not bad by any means. One thing I forgot to mention is that, of course, it's not just the green ribbon on this side. There's also the two silver lines going, uh, going um, in line with the silver ribbon. Moving on below this design right here, we could just see uh, down here in silver, it just says 
ITG Brands LLC, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27420 USA, which is where these cigarettes, I assume, are made or at least distributed from. I don't know for sure that these are actually made in the United States, but if I had to guess, they more than likely are. And yep, just made in Greensboro, North Carolina, 27420. Pretty funny zip code if I do say so myself. Then moving on below that, we could see the ribbon ends and we just move on to the uh, barcode right here. And above the barcode, we could just see that these cigarettes are, of course, FSC compliant. Moving on to the other side of the packaging, we could see in silver up here, and we get that, of course, same exact um, silver, uh, sorry, not silver, I'm getting words all jumbled up. We get that same exact um, green ribbon going all the way up, except on the bottom this time, there's no sort of dark area because of the Surgeon General warning right here, but it does still get dark towards the top. And we could, of course, see those, uh, those, uh, silver lines going down uh, vertically with the uh, sil with, with the silver. I'm saying silver. It's green. With the green ribbon, once again, kind of thing. At the top, in silver, we can just see it just says underage silver prohibited right there. And then in white on the green ribbon, it just says Surgeon General Warning. Quitting smoking now greatly reduces serious risks to, serious risks to your health. Well, I don't mind having serious risks to my health, so that's not a big deal if you ask me. We ball, you know what I'm saying? We ball. Ain't nothing gonna stop me, that is for sure. And this warning just makes me want to smoke more, but the Surgeon General wasn't thinking about that when he decided to put them on the packaging. Actually, that's advertising for me kind of thing. That's advertising. That ain't gonna stop me, that is for sure. But that's pretty much all there is to this side of the packaging. And moving on to the top of the packaging. Now we can just see it just says Fortuna right there in the same exact font that it says it on the front of the packaging and the fortuna text itself on the top of the packaging does still have a black drop shadow and of course it's on that green ribbon as well with a white background on this side and this side and those two silver lines going next to it the dark area from both the uh, back and the front of the packaging do stretch up uh, to the uh, top as well, but the middle where the actual, but the middle of the top right here where the actual Fortuna logo itself is a little bit lighter, but both on the top and the bottom, it's a little bit darker than not just because of the dark spots just stretching around to the top of the packaging. I love that. I ain't gonna lie. The design does indeed stretch around the packaging. And I think that is a nice look if I do say so myself. Moving on to the bottom of the packaging, we can see that this pack of cigarettes was purchased in, I want to say, Indiana. And we can just see the Fortuna logo right there below the Indiana tax stamp as well. Well, it just says Fortuna, uh, once again, in the same exact font as it says it on the front of the packaging, once again, with black drop shadow, and once again, on a green ribbon with the silver lines above and below, or to the side of it, depending on how you're looking at it. Uh, there's a little bit of a dark area over here, a little bit of a, a dark area over here, but it's lighter in the middle, and uh, looks pretty good as a whole. There are some cigarette numbers to this side, but one thing I want to mention before I talk about what these cigarette numbers uh, actually are, uh, I do want to just say that, of course, this stretches around pretty well to this side. I mean, like, not super well, because there's no dark spot over here or anything like that kind of thing, but it does look like it's meant to stretch around with that, which I like quite a bit, although the uh, ribbon on this, on, on the bottom of the packaging is a little bit thinner than on the side of the packaging, which is a little bit of a shame, but it does still stretch, it does still it does still stretch around a little bit better than not, which I am a fan of, I will admit. We can just see some numbers right here, and those, those numbers just read 2R2910415, uh, colon 16. I don't know what that means, I will admit, but if you guys know what these numbers mean, let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to the packaging. As a whole, do I like this packaging? I think it's better packaging than not. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Definitely better packaging than not for a budget cigarette. More unique looking than not from a distance and up close. And while it's not the most complex packaging in the world, I think it looks better than not as a whole. So I certainly cannot complain. It's not like my favorite packaging in the world, but it's definitely above average packaging to me at least. But I do suppose without further ado, I should probably now go ahead and get these cellophane all off. And I do, sh I, I do suppose I should probably now go ahead and shove the cellophane in my backpack as well. Got to make sure I'm not littering enough like that kind of thing. And now let's go ahead and just quickly take a look at what the texture and quality of this packaging is like. So the texture, oh, and there's one thing I completely forgot to mention. The coat of arms on both the front and the back is embossed. I completely forgot to mention that. I, I literally, I literally, I was literally thinking about that right before I started recording this video. I was like, I gotta make sure I mentioned that this is embossed, but like the Fortuna logo itself isn't embossed. Yeah, the Fortuna logo itself is not embossed, but the coat of arms is embossed, both, both on the front and the back. That's something I completely forgot to mention, but uh, now I've mentioned it, so I cannot complain, you know what I'm saying? The overall texture of the packaging is just very much, I'd have to say, printed paperboard. It's really nothing interesting in all honesty. 
and the quality of the packaging is eh, about average kind of thing. There's some little areas where I can kind of catch my finger on and everything like that kind of thing, but it's not bad quality packaging by any means. It's pretty hard to make an above or below average quality cigarette pack, but I've seen both that is for sure, and this is definitely right in the middle. It's pretty average if you ask me. Without further ado though, let's go ahead and get this pack of cigarettes all opened up, and let's go ahead and uh, actually take a look at what the uh, inside of the cigarette pack looks like. And one other thing I do want to mention just real quick is that the packaging does of course look so much better without the cellophane on as 99.9% .9 of all cigarette packs do. This looks so much better without the cellophane on. Yeah, looks so much better without the cellophane on. Certainly no complaints on my behalf, that is for sure. But now that I've said that, let's go ahead and get this pack of cigarettes all opened up and let's go and take a look at what the inside of the cigarette pack actually looks like. We can see on the cigarette lid right here, we get a little bit of a recycling symbol in green right there. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. So, or I guess a little bit of a not really recycling symbol, but a uh, don't litter symbol. Make sure to throw away your cigarette butt symbol, I do suppose. We can just see the cigarette insert itself is all in white. And then we can see the foil itself is all in silver. The cigarette insert does not have an interesting design to it or anything like that kind of thing, and neither does the foil. It just says pull right there on the silver foil, and that's pretty much that's all that's going on with the inside of the packaging. The foil is just standard foil used for budget cigarettes made by ITG, if I am remembering correctly. The foil itself has a very sort of slightly paper-like, slightly foily texture, I definitely have to say. Very interesting sort of um, cubed texture to it, I definitely have to say as well. Let's see how easily it pulls out. There we go pulls out pretty easily and pulls out pretty cleanly as well. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. Let's go ahead and get one of the Fortuna green menthol cigarettes all out now. And let's go ahead and take a look at what these cigarettes actually look like, what they feel like, and what the quality of them is like. And one thing I do want to take a look at real quick, I actually have some Fortuna reds in my pack of Pall Mall whites right here. I want to take a look and see. Okay. These two cigarettes, they, the, the, these are the Fortuna Reds that I have right here. This is a Fortuna Red. This is a Fortuna Menthol. The design on the two of them, I'm actually not going to grab them both with the same hand because otherwise I'm, gonna, I'm afraid I'm going to get them jumbled up. The design on the both of them is exactly the same. It is exactly the same design. So that is one thing I do want to acknowledge. It's not differentiated between the two Fortunas. And so while it does say Fortuna on the cigarette itself, it's not a design unique or a color scheme unique to the Fortuna Menthols. It's exactly the same as the Fortuna Reds. But let's go ahead and just take a look at the quality of this cigarette real quick. The quality of the cigarette seems pretty good. It's not trying to unravel or anything like that kind of thing, as you would expect from a pre-packaged cigarette. Well, you wouldn't expect a pre-packaged cigarette to try to unravel. You'd expect a... It's what I would expect from a pre-packaged cigarette to not unravel. I would expect a pre-packaged cigarette to not unravel. I guess is the right way of putting it kind of thing. This is pretty good quality. Like, it's... it's what you'd expect from a prepackaged cigarette. It's good quality kind of thing. It's, it's not unraveling. It's, it's not doing anything bad or anything like that kind of thing. Let me put it that way. No complaints on my behalf. Let me just put it that way kind of thing. So the quality is pretty good. Look-wise, this cigarette, pretty basic look if I do say so myself. Darker than not, cork-style filter with a lot of sort of beige uh, sort of details on it kind of thing. Then below that, there is a gold line right there. And then below that, in blue, it just says Fortuna right there. In the same Fortuna font that we saw on the packaging, just says it in blue, not in green, not in red, nothing like that kind of thing. Says it in blue, just like it says it on the Fortuna red. So this cigarette even though it's the Fortuna Menthols, does not have a unique look when compared to the Fortuna Reds, which is, of course, one more signifier that this is indeed a budget cigarette. It wasn't worth their time or money to try to make sure that this cigarette looks a little bit different from the full-flavored Fortunas. And so as such, they didn't even bother. Under the cork style filter, we can just see it's just white paper, and that's pretty much all there is to the look for the cigarette. Really not much going on, and it's very much a budget cigarette look in my personal opinion. Not really a bad look by any means, a more classic look than not, but not a particularly interesting look by any means. On the filter, uh, from what I can tell, there is one line of perforation. There's not a lot of dots, but the dots are not the biggest, but not the smallest either kind of thing. I'm thinking the perforation is probably not going to make the cigarette super airy, if I had to guess. It's probably just going to make the draw more heavy, I'm thinking, now that I've actually seen the line of perforation. Because while there are dots on the filter, there's not a lot of perforation by any means. I've definitely seen far worse. And taking a look at the blend of the tobacco itself, we can see it is, I'd have to say, a darker than not blend. There are still some lighter aspects to it than not, as we can see in the bottom of the cigarette right there. But it is a darker blend than not, so I'd have to say this is a medium dark blend of tobacco. And smelling this cigarette right off the bat. I'm just going to get another one out real quick, just so I can really get a fresh smell. And yeah, the, the inside of the packaging definitely smells a lot like menthol. 
But the cigarettes themselves, once you take them out of the packaging, the smell of the menthol seems to uh, go away pretty quickly. So I am wondering how intense the menthol is actually going to be. But I'd have to say the smell I'm getting is very much a more sour than not spearmint uh, menthol smell with a tiny bit of sweetness in there. Pretty basic smell for a menthol cigarette in all honesty. Really nothing too, too, too interesting, but not a bad smell by any means kind of thing. And I think that's pretty much all I had to say about this cigarette itself. Covered the smell, covered the look, covered the quality, and I covered the blend. I think that's all I had to say. As said, the look of the cigarette, not a bad look. More of a classic look than not, but not particularly interesting. And there's no distinguishing factors uh, to make you know whether this is a Fortuna menthol or a Fortuna red. But now that I've covered all that, I do think I'm going to go ahead and take a sip of water real quick and try not to let this cigarette roll away. And now, without further ado, now that I've taken a sip of water, let's go ahead and get my Fortuna green menthol cigarette all it up. And let's go ahead and see how this cigarette right here actually is. Although, first off, I should probably get my lighter out of my pocket, which I have now just done. And so now, wait a minute. Oh no, I think I, if I remember correctly, I had a Bic lighter made in Spain before. I was like, it'd be pretty amusing today if my Bic lighter was made in Spain and um, I'm smoking a Fortuna, which is a Spanish brand. I was like, that'd be funny, but no. This lighter was made in damn France. I can't believe this. It was made in France. What the hell? What the hell? No offense if you're French, but. <laughs> no offense if you're French, but. <laughs> I had to make the joke. I had to make the joke. But, but, without further ado, let's go ahead and get one of my Fortuna green menthol cigarettes all it up. And let's go ahead and see just how good or just how bad this cigarette right here actually is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying. And right off the bat, the menthol is much more intense than I thought it was going to be. And right off the bat, I am also testing, testing, tasting some chemical additive taste that is pretty icky. I don't know if that was because of the lighter fluid. I did inhale that first hit, so it wouldn't surprise me if it was the lighter fluid, but I'm hoping it's not, but it also wouldn't surprise me if it is. I'm gonna go and grab myself a little bit of a screenshot real quick, I do think. Testing the body. The body is pretty decently sized, if I do say so myself. The body is pretty decently sized, if I do say so myself. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. Definitely a slightly bigger body than I was thinking, that is for sure. Airflow-wise, the airflow is perfectly fine. The draw is a little bit heavier than not due to the perforation on the filter, I definitely have to say, but not airy at all, in all honesty. There's really no sort of airy aspect to the draw. It's really just a little bit heavy caused by the perforation, I would have to guess. Not, definitely not because of the airflow, because the airflow is pretty wide open. But the draw is definitely a little bit heavier than not, but not super heavy by any means. It is just about perfect for my personal preference. And I'd have to say, due to the lack of airiness, in the draw, it is a very smooth, nice, velvety, slightly heavy draw, that is for sure. Very much to my preference draw-wise. I'd have to say roughness, smoothness-wise. <sighs> this cigarette is very much a 5 out of 10 in my personal opinion. Not super rough by any means. And strength-wise, I'd have to say this is about a 5 or a 6 out of 10. Not quite as strong as a full-flavored cigarette. It's not getting me super buzzed at the moment, but I definitely do think that I'm going to get more buzzed as I get towards the end of the cigarette. But what is the taste of this cigarette like? Well, it is very much as I was expecting. It is a more sour than not spearmint uh, menthol taste with a hint of sweetness as an undertone. There is also a little bit of a chemical additive taste in there. That chemical additive taste is covered up pretty well by the 
menthol taste, but not perfectly so. You can still taste that chemical additive taste, and that chemical additive taste is a little bit icky if I do say so myself. It was not just the lighter fluid on my first hit. But that's very much what the taste is like. Yeah, not the greatest taste in the world, I will admit. It is very much a budget cigarette, and it tastes like it is a budget cigarette as well. But it's not terrible. It's not really good. It's not really genuinely bad per se. The menthol does a better job of covering up the chemical taste than not. I don't want to, I don't want, it isn't as bad as like a Maverick Red by any means kind of thing, but it's definitely a below average in my personal opinion for a cigarette. Definitely below average. Um, yeah, below average taste for my, in my personal opinion. It's not an interesting menthol taste either. It's just menthol. It's more, sa it's, as said, it's a, it's a, it's a, sour spearmint menthol taste with a hint of sweetness in there as well kind of thing as an undertone very 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 light sweetness barely any in there kind of thing not able to really taste any tobacco taste at all there's no dynamicness to in there at all kind of thing in my personal opinion and you're still able to taste a little bit of a chemical taste kind of thing yeah it's definitely a budget cigarette and it's not a cigarette that i like all that much i can say that right off the bat body uh, as we get towards the bottom of the cigarette is still quite large. Body is definitely bigger than I thought it was going to be, that is for sure. Uh, smoke got in my eye. I I'm crying just because of how mediocre this cigarette is. Not because I got smoke in my eye though. But yep, this cigarette is very mediocre. It's very mediocre. It's it's pretty, it's below average in my opinion. It's not like genuinely like terrible. Like would I smoke this again? If somebody handed me one, I wouldn't mind smoking one, but I'd, I would not buy a pack of Fortuna menthols with my own money. Let me just put it that way kind of thing. And I would not recommend anybody else do the same. There are better, cheap, budget menthol cigarettes out there. Well, I think that's all I had to the cigarette. As a whole, the cigarette definitely came across as more like a five um, out of 10 on roughness and smoothness wise. Definitely not. Just stubbing out the cigarette. Put that next to me, make sure I throw it away after this video. Can't be littered or nothing like that. Um, definitely got me a little bit buzzed, but came off as more of a medium cigarette than not. Definitely not like a light cigarette per se, but definitely more of a medium, I'd have to say. Not super light by any means, but definitely not a full flavored strength cigarette in my personal opinion. Although I could be wrong, I have been smoking some pretty strong cigarettes lately. I've been smoking the American Spirit uh, Full Bodied Reds lately, which are much, well, not, maybe not much, but are significantly, well, maybe not significantly, which are decently stronger than your average full flavored cigarette. So maybe that's just why I wasn't feeling a super big buzz. But definitely more of like a five out of 10 strength wise in my personal opinion. And same for, I'd have to say roughness is smooth. It's definitely a, a five out of 10. Quite smooth if I do say so myself, quite smooth, but there was still a little bit of harshness in the back of my throat. As a whole, do I like the Fortuna green menthol cigarettes that I tried for the first time in today's video? Not really, not really in all honesty. I'm not a big fan of them. They're below average and they are very much a budget cigarette, but I do like the packaging. I do like the packaging. I do got to give them some credit. I'm a fan of the packaging, but other than that, I don't really like anything about the cigarettes. And so now I do suppose it's time for me to go and give you guys my final thoughts. So what are my final thoughts on these cigarettes right here? Well, I do like the packaging. I don't think the packaging comes off as super budget in my personal opinion. And I like the asymmetricalness of it. I like the colors kind of fading in and out and everything like that kind of thing, getting darker, getting lighter. I like the packaging to say the least. The inside of the packaging, pretty basic look. Same with the look of the cigarettes themselves. Classic, but very basic look. And it's not distinguishable from other Fortuna cigarettes by any means. And while none of that is really a bad thing per se, it's, well, the packaging is definitely a good thing, but the, the look of the cigarettes is not really a bad thing. It's just about average kind of thing. It's just really nothing too special. The really main bad thing is the actual smoking experience. And the smoking experience as a whole was really not bad. I really enjoyed the draw. The draw was about perfect for my personal preference. I, I liked the smoothness as well kind of thing. The cigarettes were decently smooth. I also liked the um, strength. The strength, they weren't too heavy by any means, but they also weren't too light. I didn't mind the strength at all. And I, I didn't mind the body either. The body was really big. I liked the airflow. I liked the draw. I liked the strength. I liked the I like I liked the uh, the rough and smoothness. I liked all of that, but I, I don't like the taste. And I'm not a menthol cigarette smoker. I don't like menthols. Uh, I will admit. Um, but uh, even though I don't like menthols, I do still have menthols I enjoy. And this is not one of them. This is this is not one of them kind of thing. The taste of the cigarette as a whole was very much a sour spearmint menthol taste with a little bit of sweetness in there, still with, sadly, an icky chemical additive taste. 
And that's very much what the taste of the cigarette was like. Pretty basic menthol as a whole, and the menthol didn't do a good enough job of covering up that sort of chemical taste. This cigarette would be getting a better rating if it didn't have a chemical taste in it, of course. Even with the menthol being pretty basic, it's not bad per se if there's no chemical taste in it kind of thing. I don't mind a basic menthol by any means kind of thing. It's not my favorite, but I don't mind a basic menthol. Um, that just tastes pretty basic, pretty standard. And this tastes pretty basic, pretty standard if you ask me. But the really thing that the, the thing that really sets, sends it over the edge for me and makes this cigarette really not all that great is really the chemical taste. And that's why this cigarette is going to be getting a five out of 10. With really the only good things about these cigarettes being everything other than the smoking experience, the packaging, and well, being everything about the smoking experience besides the taste and the packaging. But due to the taste, I would not recommend anybody ever buy these in all honesty. There are much better cheap budget menthol cigarettes out there in my personal opinion. And I would recommend you buy one of those rather than these. Not really a big fan of these cigarettes, I will admit. They're okay. They're definitely about uh, average, I'd have to say, as a whole. But the taste is definitely below average, if you ask me. So, you know, 5 out of 10 for the Fortuna Green Menthol Cigarettes, in my personal opinion. Anything below a 7 out of 10 is something I don't really recommend purchasing, in all honesty. And a 5 out of 10, these are not, like, terrible per se. I'm not like, I'd smoke if I absolutely had to. But... I wouldn't buy a pack with my own money, let me just put it that way. Five out of 10 for the Fortuna Green Menthol Cigarettes, to say the least. I think that's all I had to say though. I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video where I reviewed the Fortuna Green Menthol Cigarettes. Thank you so much once again to Fred Scott for sending this pack of cigarettes over to my PO Box for me to make a review of. I really do appreciate it. But you know, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, of course, please make sure to well, like and subscribe for more content. I have my Instagram, my book, my merch, my PO Box, and my main, not my main channel. This is my main channel, my second channel, all in the description down below. Go check it all out. But you know, thank you so much for watching, y'all. Till the next one, stay safe and peace and have a great one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying.